Good to go. Okay. All right, let's go. So, Kate, if you can do what you just did outside. Yep, I will go. try my best. Hi, I am Kate Ridgeway. I am the State Archaeological Conservator. Welcome to the Department of Historic Resources. Um, as you may have heard, yesterday we found a copper box at the Lee pedestal. Uh, I will say that it does appear that this is the box that uh, we had expected. It um, is, the measurements are correct. It weighs, I mean, it measures about 13 and a half inches by 13 and a half inches by seven and a half inches. In the papers, it was measured at 14 inches by 14 inches by eight inches. So that's well within what we were expecting. We um, also have tested it and we used a portable XRF machine to test it. And it does um, say that it is actually made of copper, which is also what we were expecting. So it does appear to be the box we were actually expecting as opposed to last week, which is a completely different thing. So what happened is it was found in a little alcove at the pedestal. It was found in a pool of water. So we had concerns that water had gotten inside. There was a little mortar around it, but it was much easier to remove than the last one. So it actually just, we were able to pull it right out. So after that, we brought it here. We have, um, done before treatment photography. It's part of a conservation process. We want to make sure we have all the images before we start doing anything to it. And so last night we did photography. We did the analysis of the metal and we had the Richmond Bomb Squad come and do x-rays for us. You may have seen those x-rays. They did confirm what we were expecting from the inventory. We saw mini balls, we saw buttons, we saw coins, we saw books. Um, and what we're seeing looks good. It looks like it's in good condition. Um, so what we did last night was after photography and everything, we wrapped it up in uh, blankets. The concern is that it was very cold yesterday. We brought it into a warm environment. The inside is going to have condensation and water and we don't want any water in there. So we were trying to bring the temperature up slowly. So we seem to have mostly succeeded. This morning I got here at 730. After a few hours, and consultation with folks, we realized we're really not getting this open the way we got the last one open. The only way this is opening is if we cut it open. So we now have everything we need. We cut three out of the four sides. We're gonna cut the last side live on television, which is terrifying. And <laughs> so um, what we did after we cut the three sides, we wanna make sure that it stays as dry as possible. So we wrapped it up, we put silica gel in there and we've uh, vacuumed out any air we could, and we've left it there waiting for you guys to come. So what you're gonna see us doing is I am going to clamp this down to the table. We're gonna take, we're gonna take all of this off. We're gonna clamp it to the table. I'm gonna be using a saw to cut off the last side. Hopefully it will go as quickly as the other three. Um, We'll have my boss here will be operating the vacuum to try and vacuum up anything that might be coming out as we saw. Um, Sue will be helping to hold the box down because I'll be pushing down and we don't want it to flip for obvious reasons. Um, what you'll see in there, because we did see a little bit of condensation, we slid a piece of blotter paper in there. It's just a white absorbent piece of paper. Um, and so we put it in there to help catch some of that um, condensation on the inside of the box so that it's not dripping on the artifacts. So when we open it, you're gonna see that and it's gonna be really unimpressive, but we're gonna take that off and then you will see what everybody else will see. After that, we are very quickly gonna to start to take artifacts out. We have folks in the back who are helping us with these artifacts to stabilize them. So we're gonna take things out. I'm gonna try and get photographs so that you guys can have stills if you don't manage to get a photograph. And um, we're just gonna be moving things back as quickly as possible because we need to get these things stabilized. The most important thing is that these artifacts are preserved. It is not that you guys get a good shot. I'm really sorry to tell you that. So um, we're gonna do that. Um, are there any questions before? Okay, what does it mean for something to be stabilized? So to be stabilized means that when, so these artifacts have been in this box for 130 years. They've only been exposed to themselves and their own air supply. We have now introduced a ton of extra air and a ton of extra water. And so 
it's not used to that, and we want to make sure that it has a chance to um, come to an equilibrium on its own um, speed. And if anything's really wet, we want to make sure that we can freeze it. So what we want to do is make sure these artifacts are in a state that we can leave them until we have a chance to treat everyone individually and work with the owners to have them treated the way they need to be treated. Could you talk a little bit more about the possibility of a, a potential photograph being resident? OK, so that's a really good question. We won't know until you know, uh, but I will say that photographs are notoriously unstable and deteriorate really quickly. So the likelihood, if there is a Lincoln photo in here, which is not likely, we will be removing it very quickly. We will get you photographs of that, but we have to get it stabilized and in the back very quickly or else it will not survive. So that has to be a priority. So as soon as we th see things, we're just going to be doing that. So hopefully you guys have copies of the inventory from 1887. You can follow along. We're going to be getting an inventory out there because you never know if somebody threw something extra in there. Um, and we will keep you posted as we know, but we just, we're going to get you information as we can. All right, we got lots of work to do, but yeah. before Kate gets started, how about a round of applause for her? <laughs> because I was nervous. So now you have to watch that too. used to absorb the moisture that was in the box. I'm trying to not jostle this any more than we have to. So I'm going to lift it if you guys can just take away the... Okay, go. It weighs 36 pounds for anybody who has any questions about that. Um, okay, can I have this twill tape? Yep. So right now I'm putting these in because I'm trying to prevent the lid from just falling in. There's blue tape on here that I was using as a guide while I was cutting. It is not a part of the artifact. I'm sure you knew that. Archaeological Conservator for the Department of Historic Resources. I'm Sue Donovan, Conservator for Special Collections at University of Virginia Library. Elizabeth Moore, I'm the State Archaeologist with the Department of Historic Resources. I'm Leslie Straub, I'm the Collections Manager for the Department of Historic Resources. And what you don't see is behind the scenes we have several people who work at local museums helping and they just are, um, we just needed more room. So they're in the back 
Um, and we, honest to God, just needed you guys to not hassle people while we're trying to do stuff. So you can hassle me, that's great, but back there we'll be dealing with artifacts. Okay. Um, I need my lamps. Okay, so I'm, I'm putting this block in place to help guide the saw so I can cut a straighter line because I'm not sure if you noticed, but I'm nervous. Mm -hmm. So, okay. I'm um, just going to... Right. Yep, we good to go? Yeah, I guess we're good to go. All right. All right, well, okay. Just kidding. Thank you. Uh, it was just a real quick yeah. 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 Thank you. Watch out for that. Okay. Okay. You want to clear this off? Okay, folks. Everybody ready? is going to be Any of the metals, the metal coin from last time started to tarnish within a minute. It was bright silver and then it turned gray. So we're just getting these back into silica gel as quickly as possible. Huh? Uh, yeah, just start pulling, yeah. If you can get any of those coins and stuff, just start pulling them out. Uh, is it this? I don't know. So some of the stuff we sort of understand, we know there were some mini balls in here. There does appear to be the piece of wood that had the bullet stuck in it um, right here on top. Um, do you want me to take care of the wood? Yeah, okay. Um, well, actually, I can do the wood and you can do the yeah, fair. coins. So that's yep. Okay, so we're pulling out the metals first because they're on top. Everybody. Um, here's one of the buttons. It has, it looks like the Virginia seal actually on it. Um, I 
Okay, folks. Um, so while we're assessing things, um, you're going to get to watch. That's how that works. If you have questions, if you have questions, just shout them out, and I'll do what I can to answer. If I don't answer you, it's because I'm not paying attention, and that's how the world rolls. Okay. I don't know if you guys can see. We've got the mini balls here. Oh, okay. So she's just like covering some mini balls. We have a button here. Uh, this feels a little. Uh, I can't quite tell. It says. I can't quite tell, honestly. tell that there's moisture that came from the condensation on the top of the lid. Um, it's not too bad. It's not soup, so we're okay with that. So just so that you guys can see, there was supposed to be an inscription on this box. I am not seeing that. You can see how wet it is on the inside from condensation, though. If we find an inscription, we'll send you guys a picture, but right now, I'm just not seeing that. Hey, Kate, what does it say on that book right there? Uh... Which book? There's like four or five thousand books yeah. in there right now. <laughs> Which book? It's hard to read it upside down, but <laughs> um, I see something Island. Bird Island, Patent Family Flower. Huh. <laughs> Constitution uh, and Bylaws of Lee Camp Program. Yeah. Yes, that's our first one there. Um, that was on the inventory. I'm just trying to figure out which ones to take out first. Um, sorry, let me know what you need help with. Yeah. Just to get the orientation of what's in there. It is very tightly packed, yes. It, there's a reason it weighed 36 pounds and there's still no water in there. If you have a lot of books and never moved them, it feels like that. <laughs> to, trying to give you a sense. Uh, definitely some calling Someone's card. calling card, yeah. Mosby? Looks like we got some individual letters. So if we can just keep this pathway clear, that would be great. No jumping. You terrify me when you jump. Who's jumping? There's someone behind me. Okay. Okay. April 29th, Harper's Weekly, 
No, this is definitely not dry, unfortunately. But it's also not soup, so there's that, I guess. Yeah. So you can read the writing. Yes, we can read it. You can see. Wow. I cannot lift this up. Um, you want me to go uh, get a piece of? I'll, I'll, I need to just put it out on the yeah, go. on the table. Yeah, go do what you need to do. Yeah. <laughs> so I have to say, it looks like a picture of Lincoln. It said Lincoln on it, so this may be not at all what everyone was hoping for. This, this here <laughs> looks like it was a way to mend uh, the tears in the middle. Someone mended it. Did you hear that? Yeah. So it looks like when they put this in, it was already torn, and they actually have a mend on there because this had been folded already many times. Mm -hmm. And so it looks like a figure grieving over the grave of Lincoln. Um, it's, a, it's a printed image. A printed image from Harper's Weekly, 260, pages 264 and 265. It's like a centerfold picture. Okay, and then I'm getting out of your way, Susie, so you can get this out of here. Can you take a look at this and see yeah. if you can tell me what's going on? So there would be a picture of someone reading over that one. Over Lincoln. Over Lincoln. Mm -hmm. What's the year on that? Number? 1865. Oh, what's that? So this is the part of, that's the shell, the fragment from Frederick's that we were actually afraid, sorry, I picked that up, from, is live ordinance. Um, and it's in fact not live. This was part of the reason we had the bomb squad come out um, because we weren't, we don't trust what they wrote in the newspaper back then. So um, we wanted to make sure it actually wasn't live before anybody came into the lab. So I think that is what we have here. Sorry, there was supposed to be a fragment of a shell from a battle in Fredericksburg. I think we got money. So I'm making the decision not to, this looks like Confederate money um, in an envelope. Um, I'm making the decision not to um, separate it all right now because as a stack, it retains more moisture and I'll have more time later to separate the individual notes. So I'm going to leave that as it is right now. Um, there's some goo, there's some goo on the envelope so I can't really read what that says. Sorry. There's, looks like there's Confederate notes in here. Okay, they were supposed to be yeah. some of those, yeah. So you're leaving that as a... I'm leaving that right yep. now. I will separate it later. Perfect. Um, 12 copper coins. Oh, there was a, um, supposed to be a bundle of coins. 12 copper coins, Julie Monument from Charles Howard, maybe? Or Har Harwood? Um, I think it's in pretty good shape considering what we normally get with these. Um, I'm just going to hold this up real quick. Um, I think it's in better shape than we had expected. We thought everything was going to be soup, but it's not soup, so we're pretty, it's pretty great. What about the, uh, I keep going back to that picture, how does that, how does that, how does that look in shape? That's a Sioux question. Uh, it's an old newspaper from 1865 that's already had some wear and tear before it got put into the box itself. So I would say considering it looks like it's in pretty good shape considering that kind of wear and tear before it even got put in the box. All right. Is there anything else you need? It's like... It's um, so, yeah, I think I think looks sometimes can be deceiving here, and so it's so packed, and the um, the boards of the books have splayed. So um, I'm going to have to really work with Kate to figure out what's going to come out first, so we can release others. Yeah, sorry, I'm going to. And it might. Uh, Donovan. I might need to. Yeah, if I pull this the book is a little closer to you. Will that loosen enough for you to get that? Maybe. Mm -hmm. 
a Bible right there. Yeah, that does look like there. We were expecting a Bible, and it does look like maybe we have a Bible. Okay. Um, um, just sort of like no, no, you take yeah. your time. Cram packed. Um, next time capsule, maybe not so much stuff in it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're getting the time machine together, right? You tell them. Like one one less book. Is there a bottle in there? Uh, a Bible. Is there a bottle? I do not see a bottle. I call fibs. <laughs> Well, so I have a metal. Well, that's not. Uh, oh, it's just yeah, it's like, real stuff. So do we just start from here? Oh, I've oh my gosh, it's nice. Right. Yeah, it's like so stuck. Yeah. Um, Might even like maybe if I try the fire. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to look for something that's got a little more stability to it, but these are, the board is still sort of mushy. Okay. If I pull it, it'll all come apart. Um, is there a way we can slip something in between them so that you can loosen up one, one thing? We could try. Um, okay, guys, really, we need to keep that clear. Um, I don't know what we need yet. Um, that is really stuck. Do you want me to try? Sure. Okay. Can you wedge it under the spine? It's not moving at all. Oh my god. So basically what it looks like has happened is that there's enough water in here that everything is expanded and um, it's made everything kind of stick. Um yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're going to see if our other conservators in the back have any ideas about how to loosen this up. The, the problem with using a lot of force is that I could rip everything to shreds if I, if I hulk out on it, so we'll avoid doing that. <clears throat> it's not the smelliest time capsule I've worked with. <laughs> do you all have any equipment that analyzes the air as soon as you open it up? Uh, no, we don't have that kind of equipment. I think industrial hygienists might. Uh -huh. So if you know any of those. Okay. Um, we're open to ideas. I mean, it's everything is really stuck. I cut the sides, we're going to cut I guess I could put, I don't even know if I can get anything in there to protect. I guess I could do here and here. Can you see if there's anything? Because this will continue to expand, right? So if I do here, I won't hit anything. If I do here, what does it look like I'll hit anything? Um, I think you might be far enough away. I think you might have just have Okay, I just wanted another, I just wanted another set of eyes on that before I made that decision. Okay, let's talk to Sue and see if that's the game plan.
Hey Ryan, have you gotten directly over top of it yet? where we can see that I probably won't hit anything. To help release some of this pressure, we have to sacrifice the box for the artifacts inside. Not ideal, but it, it's the way it is. Um, copper has a lot to recommend it. So you can make it pretty thin and have it still be strong. It also acts as a fungicide and a biocide so that things that would like normally deteriorate um, books and things won't really live near copper. So they may have known that, I don't know. Um, also it's waterproof if it stays closed. I'm trying to decide how I'm going to do this. I do think I want to clamp, if I clamp it, I'm going to be pushing this way, the clamp will help. Right. Well, no, I think I'm just going to have to have somebody from just make sure I'm not pushing it too much and we're going to yep. have to cover all of this. Yeah. Would that piece of blotter that we used to go yeah. somewhere? Okay. So Sue and all our colleagues are in the back stabilizing things we've already gotten out and I'm going to be doing this. So basically right now I'm putting things down to help protect the artifacts inside from any copper that I might be generating. Okay, I need the blue tape to, I want right to yeah. know where the artifacts are yeah. before I cut. Yeah, that needs to come off. So right back to here. You don't have much room. I don't have much room, yeah. Super excited about this. Yeah. Okay, so the problem is I want to make sure I'm not hitting artifacts, but I also have to get past the corner of the box or else I'm just going to be cutting through the other side. So just cutting. I'm trying to get myself as much room as possible. Oh, this is going to suck. Sorry, that's the most polite thing I can say. Okay. Um, I'm going to need you to keep an eye out too, yep. to see what I'm, because yep. um, I, I can't, I literally can't get anything in there to protect the artifact. Okay. I'm also going to sit down for this. Yep. Okay, this, this side I got plenty of room. Oodles of room. Yes. Yeah. Outside of the tape. Outside of the tape. Yeah, yeah, outside of the tape. Which one can see? Nope, that's the game plan. Okay, you need I do. Whoever had okay. safety goggles before needs them back on. Yeah, that bar is back in the back. Which I would like to back for. Yes. I'll hold it from the inside. Yeah, you're fine. I just gotta yeah. get her a micro spatula. Okay. Push towards the edge. I'm going to 
do the easy yeah. side first, which is this side. Easy side. Hard side. Terrifying side. Okay. So. Okay. Ready? Um, sure. Sure, why not? Yeah. Hey Sue? Yeah. 
Come here. Sorry. Just come around this yeah. side. Do you see that? Yeah. Okay. You just tell me how much I need to pull the clock. Just want to push it here. Okay. Okay, go for it. Okay, pull. So a piece of paper has gotten stuck to the side. We're trying not to rip it off. Yeah, go ahead. It's alright. Okay. Can you get to wrench it back? Yes, go. Here. So we're basically trying to separate two pieces of paper that are want to be stuck together. So it's just going to take a second. She's using a Teflon tool, the white spatula you see in her hand. Um, she's using that to carefully separate everything so that um, we can try and keep everything as uh, in one piece as possible. What's the tool called again? Uh, it's a Teflon tool, so it's like a spatula made out of Teflon. Language. Do I need to go? Yeah, I think this will. A little. I mean, I can push this down. of the Grand Lodge of Ancient York Masons of the state of Virginia. Richmond Directory. Oh, we did expect a Richmond Directory in here. Uh, blank Book Manufacturers, Richmond, Virginia. Merchants and Manufacturers. 
good question. There's also actually, no, you know what? This is what it's from. Oh, some of that is from that. Oh. Okay, so what I'm seeing now is you can see the line of books. We'll see if we can get those out with this um, movement that we have. But there's also a mini ball in here. And so that might also help us. Issue? Yes. Yeah. Is it on the Holy Bible? Yep. Yeah. Wow. Another coin. I saw an impression of a coin, so. Silver, United States, and just like that, okay. one dime. Do you want me to take this out? Or not yet? Not yet. Not yet. Perfect. Oh wait, Elizabeth. Elizabeth, wait. Oh, okay. This would give us more bang for the buck. Okay. Uh, how, what direction do you want to be? So basically, I'm just trying to give her more room without damaging the box any more than we have to. Oh, the water. There was just a huge drop of water that just squeezed out of it. Maybe a little more wet than we hoped for. Suction. Suction. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Oh, I don't know if that's honest, because I, I can't get my... Let's try the there. littler things. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You tell me where you need to be, and then I, I got longer arms. Okay. Is that going to be enough? What's left? Yep, there. You can get a better vision, I think, of... Uh, it doesn't look like any stuff to the side right now. Oh, you got it? Okay, something. So you appear to be more envelopes, letters, maybe something like that? That way, yeah. just as easily. Yeah, that's 
Okay, so what we're seeing is Richmond a Guide, 1881 by Daniel Murphy, Constitution and Bylaws of Virginia Mechanics Institute, 1887. I think you need to open that. Okay. Apparently something I need to open. Uh, it's just easier. I'm steadier if I'm sitting. William B. Isaacs, Grand Secretary of something. There you go. Someone who knows their history. Excellent. That's what we like to hear. <laughs> okay. Okay, this is William Isaac stationery. This is William Isaac. It appears that there's something in here, so I'm just going to... Oh, this is... There was a compass supposed to be in here, right? A what? A compass? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So here's the question. Do you want me to get this out? I think it's a compass like that. Yes. So I can try that way. I can I know it's really like that's the challenge here. Um, so you can see we're taking a lot of pictures of things before we do anything because normally we would have a really controlled environment where we take photographs that just isn't the game plan today something for those of you who hopefully can see hey Sue yes sorry no you're fine I just Ooh. so I'm going to separate these but we will need to make like I'll tell them that this is all a group we need to make sure that they know the envelope is out of wood. There we go. It's a Masonic symbol and a flag carved out of wood. Those were made from a tree that grew over Stonewall Jackson's grave. Oh, this is that. I know exactly what you're talking about. Excellent. Thank you. Yes, um, Dale. Can you hold it up? Yeah, just a sec. 
So, I'm just going to hold them up one at a time. Um, so, can you do this? are made out of wood. Compass and square. Okay? So this uh, envelope says badges of Army, Northern Virginia. Also, I think something we were expecting. Again, William Isaacs's uh, envelope. So I don't know if you can see they've started to lay out the Confederate money out here. Um, we have ten dollar, five dollar, two dollar bills, a fifty cent bill, a one dollar bill, bunches of them. Okay. So that was what was in one of those envelopes. I'm gonna, yeah, I've got more stuff for you. Thank you. So I'm just trying to make sure the right expert gets the right artifacts. that were carved from, who was it who said it? You, yes. The tree that grew over Stonewall Jackson's yes. original grave. Yes. And so those were two artifacts that were carved out of it. One was a flag and one was a, um, a compass and square, which is a Masonic symbol. What type of flag was it? Um, yeah. keep in the back.
Uh, okay, so I've been doing this since 1997. Um, honestly, this is this is fine. <laughs> I, 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 I know everybody wants this to be like a big thing, but we deal with history every day, and I gotta say, the things that really like make me excited are the things that are very personal, like shoes where you can see people's footprints, fingerprints in a clay pot. Like that's what does it for me. These are books. So this is Polytex. It's a material that we're putting this on so that we can make sure that um, we can get these artifacts back there safely and they don't stick to the tray or anything else. So right now I'm just looking for a way in. I don't know if you can see, but a lot of these books are actually stuck together, um, which is a problem. And even though we've managed to clear out a section of this, they're still all stuck together. Is there any sense to letting them dry out as a clump and then separate them, or do you have to get them separated first? Um, that's a Sue question. Um, I, I actually just don't. It's been so long since I've studied any paper conservation, I, I'm hesitant to answer that. I, I missed the question. So the question is, is there any benefit to letting these dry together as a clump and separating them later? Uh, uh, it sort of depends. Um, if they, it's a little better for them to dry flat, where there can be an, um, an equivalent amount of air moving through, otherwise you have spots that are um, more wet or more dry than others and that can cause, um, that can cause foxing, that can cause staining, it can even cause mold. So it's sort of like, uh, it depends on how many hands you have on staff and um, how much time you have and how much freezer space. Uh, we have the freezer space, so um, drying it slowly as, like dry, drying a book slowly will be to our benefit. Um, we don't have enough hands to interleave those wet books. It could even break the binding. But for these flat items, um, while we can, um, and while they're pliable in this wet phase, um, I'd like to get them flat and dry. Uh, I have another newspaper for you. Okay. Um, okay. So if that's Kate's doing her really good work, I think it's uh, another opportunity for just tuning in to thank the Department of Historic Resources here. And Julie Langan is the agency head, and Stephanie Williams here. Um, we also, just so folks know, Secretary Grinley Johnson. Grinley, wave your hand. He's our Secretary of Administration for the Commonwealth, oversees the Department of General Services and BGS, uh, oversaw a lot of the work out of the circle. Devon Henry. Devon, say hello. hello. Devon is our, uh, Yay, Devon. Devon is our general, general contractor, and he's a real hero in this tale. He took this job when uh, not a lot of other folks would take it, and has uh, an incredible group that has indexed all the material out of the circle and, and found not one but two time capsules. Just wanted to, uh, and obviously a big shout to our communications folks and Grant into the back of the governor's uh, chief communications director to put this together and make sure you have eyes You promised me no more, right? <laughs> yeah. Yes, say it. <laughs> I do that. Ah, We're still working. You're killing me. You need me to tag in? I'm just wondering if I can. Actually, I just got it. Um, do you want to take that? I don't. I can't read what it says. So I would like to continue to credit the fabulous folks in the back that you're never going to see. 
who are helping us so much, and we love them. Give them a round of applause, too. Thank you. Hey, I found a rubber band. You're kidding me, right? Are you kidding me? No. Stop stretching it. Do <laughs> Sunday, Volume 2, Number 315. Henrico Democrats is all I can read. I just, I just feel like I keep holding things up like it's a holy grail. Um, Sue's going to be in charge. Oh my gosh, you can see my lovely thing. This is awesome. Okay, I'm going to leave that to you. What year is on that? I cannot see anything about a year yet. Um, well, you're you want me to try and pl I can do that, but I want your opinion on something. Yes. Okay. Here we go. Oh, I know, but I, I want to, before anything happens, do it. Just first, take a disconnect. shout I didn't give, and I should have, but Cindy Bailey, who's the governor's council here, and Jessica Colleen, who is here. If you all remember, uh, taking down this monument was not without its legal challenges, and Rita Davis, who is Cindy's predecessor, uh, kind of led the way to, it's to make sure It's a piece of card, I think. It's two pieces of card. Picture of that. Yeah. Yeah. J.H. Capers, Richmond Commandery Number 2, Knights Templar. Here's me a list of officers, knights, past commanders, honorary members.
these two artifacts are together, and this was found inside of this. Got it. We'll cover it. Yeah. Yep. Right. Thank you. Okay, next. for your patience. Let me know if you have any questions. Let's see where I might need you for this one. Okay. See the, how is that? Did that go there? Possibly. It could be the pace down. That's fine. Something that's uh, textile based, so we're calling her. We have one, two, three, four, five. Many, 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 many. Um, I don't know. Yeah, maybe halfway. Um, can go try and find the copies online and then they'll know what the pictures are before we do. Can you read the date on the newspaper? Uh, let's see if I can read it now. Um, <laughs> so there's the Daily Dispatch, Richmond, Wednesday morning, December 2nd, 1868. Then it has a name of a person at the top, Hal Halbert maybe, J.B. Halbert, Richmond, Virginia at the top. Um, this one Yay. is the same person. Uh, it's the fancy bits. Yeah. So my guess is probably a similar date, but uh, April 2nd, 1887, Saturday. At least that's a date, a date I see. It may not be the date. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, wait, uh, no, it might be a Tuesday, January 2nd, 1883. Double sheet, it says. How many okay. mini balls have you found so far? Uh, one, two, three, this will be the fourth, I think, plus one in a tree. Oh. <laughs> California. Oh, California. California Regiment 71 PA, dedicated, dedication of monument and reception of something, Gettysburg PA. But you can leave that here if you want to. I don't want to take up your hands. Uh, you got it? I can probably take it. Yeah. You know, 
That's why I need extra people. <laughs> is the minutia of soldier life. Don't we all know it? Um, there, there is a cloth bookmarker, so that's what we're trying to Was on page 157. Oh, there we go. By Carlton McCarthy. Get a good one. That's all I need. I don't need one right now. What page is your book marker? 152. Is that what I said? 157. There we go. Is that me? That's actually a commemorative ribbon that they handed out a lot of them on the day the cornerstone was laid. So it's not unique. Is it me? Yes. That's a commemorative ribbon. I'm going to take these away. There's a carpet on It looks like we still have some pamphlets, some books, a mini ball, uh, another newspaper maybe. So whenever you get a chance, uh, plug it in there. You got it. And then if you want to hold it up while she does her thing, or I can get my glove on. You can hold it up. Sure, Got another coin. Okay, I found another coin. Needs to go back. Did it just fall off? Yeah, that's right. Oh, here, let, me, let me show where it was.
see the title on that. Uh, reports of Chamber of Commerce, Richmond, Virginia, What she's taking a picture of now is there's a larger book. It seems to be wrapped in paper, and there's some kind of writing on the outside. So she's taking a picture while it's in there. Okay, and then I'm going to hold this while she does her thing. It's wrapped in some kind of twine. Yeah. There's more rubber bands. Mm. So we're finding rubber bands in here, in case anybody's <laughs> interested in that, uh, which I think is interesting. Me too. So the uh, reports of the commerce, uh, 1886 and 1887. Uh, reports of the Chamber of Commerce, Richmond, Virginia, 86 and 87. Two distinct volumes. Okay, got Plan right now. I'll just, I think we can, we'll just have to. Yeah, we're going to get to that layer and then that scratch and show, I think. Yeah. Did she hear me? She'll hear me in a few seconds. Okay. Yeah. Ooh, water. Water, water. Oh, water, water everywhere. I, uh, I think the wrapping is backwards, so I can't read the writing right now. Okay, so it looks like there's like four pamphlets mm -hmm. in here. Mm -hmm. Let's check them out as a chunk. Did they come out as a chunk? Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay, awesome. There you go. Pamphlets. Got it, go. So, all I was saying is that I think when we get this out, that's going to be you. I'm happy to help, but does that look like? Looks like it's I was just expecting it to be the fall, but maybe you're right. I know. Well, we'll check back with you when we can see more. It is the heat of everyone's stairs. Thanks, guys. Um, okay. We'll call you back if it turns out. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Can I get another uh, tray, please? Yeah. Yep. Uh, I can't read that. You want to read that out? Postmaster, if this package should not be called for, please notify me and I will send stamps sufficient for its return. <laughs> William B. Isaacs, Grand Secretary, Richmond, Virginia. Well, there you go then. <laughs> uh, this looks like string. That, yeah, I, that one I think is string. Okay. Yeah, let me put the string wrap on together and then I can see those. Okay. Okay, you read them. All right. 
an historical account of some memorable actions, particularly in Virginia, by Sir Thomas Grantham, KT, Randolph and English Booksellers and Binders, Richmond, Virginia. You want to turn that sideways? I can probably fit this one on there too. Yeah. This next book is wrapped in paper. It's a printed other book. Yeah. Uh, Postmaster. Postmaster. If this is not called for within yeah. 10 days. <laughs> <laughs> They're really worried. Uh, please notify WB Isaacs, Grand Recorder, Grand ENC period, K period, T period, United States, Richmond, Virginia. I'm assuming that's Knights of Templar for KT. If you could get me another tray. Yep. That would be grand. Just take a picture of front and back. Thank you. Oh, well, that's a problem. You got tweezers. Okay, wait, I can stop right there because I got more coming to you. Okay. Unidentified piece of iron. Yeah. This coin is dated 1853. Probably a mini ball. Let me hold it. Let me see. Can you get a picture? Yeah. Of that. Got it. Okay, it's on page one. Well, you can see 130. Maybe should I get the page number? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, you know what? I'm going to take this out first and okay. then I'll worry about that. So there's a coin stuck in this book, um, which is not ideal. the end of my abilities. Let me show you. So there's a coin in here and it's sort of mashed it into mm -hmm. this book and so it's kind of stuck. So do you want to try or should I keep trying? I can try unless okay. you're in a good spot. And I just want you to see it because you want to try to Oh, there you go. No. <laughs> no, it's okay. Oh, I'm going to do that anyway. No, you did a great job. Do you get the point out? Uh, yes. Okay, here's another button. And I'm going to trade you because I'm afraid that's going to fall over. So this is the Grand Officers and their address, 1886-87. And I have a problem with a coin, annual convocation. Take your chair. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, something state of Virginia. And then it goes in the back. Um, uh, the book is 1886 Annual Convocation Grand Chapter of State of Virginia, Royal Arch Masons. And this is a point. Uh, just a sec. Eagle on the back, Liberty on the front, 1886. Silver coin and button and a piece of iron. Button has a naval symbol on it. Uh, this coin says 1853 and has seated woman on one side and uh, eagle on the other. Not great. Okay, can I take these away? Yeah, then take this coin away in just a minute, please. Okay, oh, this one? Yeah. There's another coin attached to a book. I'll show you. What are you trading me? I'll give you an empty tray. Yes, give me an empty okay. tray. Just. Oh, the immigrant's friend. Okay. Okay, folks, next time capsule, put the points somewhere separate so they're not getting in everything. The other ones are individually wrapped. Yeah, the individually wrapped coins, we like them better. One cent piece. Actually, I need the smaller micro special. Is there one over there? Perfect, thank you. Native American head on one side, one cent on the other. I am not seeing a date. It's a bit worn. Um, hey, Elizabeth, can you take this coin back? Yeah, can you see that? Is there anything else on there? Okay, fair. Army of the Northern Virginia Memorial Volume. Okay, thank you. Already, we're down to the bottom. We're getting down to the bottom now. So this is 1880 Army of Northern Virginia Memorial Volume. Okay. Uh, keep yeah. What would you like me to do? Uh, I'm. You do we need, do need Gretchen for consult for this? Okay. This is really interesting. Okay. You want me to go get her? Yeah. Get, you want to go get her? Okay. So we still have a mini ball, we have some pamphlets, and we're having a debate about what the thing on the bottom is. That last one, you just one that one? Uh, I honestly don't remember. Oh, okay. Sorry. Northern Virginia Memorial. Northern Virginia. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Do you want me to try and get any of the rest of this out or wait yeah, for Gretchen? No, okay. Okay, another newspaper. Uh, yeah, I definitely can't read that one. It says Richmond, Virginia. 
uh, the immigrant's friend, 500 Virginia farms for sale or exchange. In case anyone's in the market. <laughs> Friend. Published by Manning, C. Staples and Company, Real Estate Agents and Auctioneers, Richmond, Virginia, 1104 and a half Main Street. Their telephone number is 114. I mean, that's all the numbers. But they have, yeah, they have a phone. piece of card that's sort of folded up in a heavy piece of paper. I'm really not sure what I'm looking at.
you get it? Yeah. That's what we like to hear. Okay. Um, you want to just... Oh, it looks like something is chopping in here. No, you're fine. So what they're discussing right now, we're at the very bottom thing. We're trying to figure out how to get it out. We're trying to figure out if it's stuck to the bottom. It's quite large. It sort of folds up to one side. I honestly, I can't tell you what it looks like. Yeah. So like the envelope might be in. So it's like it's not stuck. It's just water. It's just stacking down. Yes, the capillary reaction for sure. It feels strong. It could be parchment. Or you know the yeah. at home and we're on the last item but one more thank you particularly over the holidays to our DHR staff that we see here and also in the back big round of applause Yay. Yay. Andy Evans and our media film office have been documented thank you to the press for being I know some folks asked about our uh, 10 year old here Virginia civics and Virginia history is taught in uh, fourth grade so this is an excellent opportunity to have you a got a clean tray over here <laughs> Yes, that's the last item. Here, we'll... <laughs> Got a quick look. We're going to put this in silica gel, too, because the box is an artifact as well. Right, we're going to take it back onto yeah. the table so we can look at it. Got a little more room. Um, it looks really um, a silver color, but until I get it um, tested with our uh, portable x-ray fluorescence, I won't be able to give you an answer. Okay. I'm just going to leave it here for a second. Um, Thank you. 
seen that we made it through. Again, great shout out to the team at the Department of Historic Resources. Right, we're going to do one more thing before we wrap up for the day. They've got a, a little bit of time sensitive work to do here over the next few minutes to get these artifacts in good shape uh, to make sure that they are, are safe and, and conserved over the coming days. And then we're going to ask the team to come back and give you a quick overview of what, do we, of what the next steps are, what they'll be doing over the next couple of days, couple of weeks. Uh, to make sure that all the artifacts are in good shape. So just be patient, and then we'll turn to that, and we'll wrap up for the day. Cool. cool. Um, it's really weird to see me back there on TV. Would I back there? Uh, okay. Okay. the side of the box? Where do you think we should do it? Yeah, yeah. Like just, I don't even know if it should go like that. Should you reveal it or just nothing, nothing but box? Yeah. Right?
while I wait for the sucker to heat up? That's a good question. Uh, that might be a question for Julie. <laughs> Of course, we will work together with our team to make sure yeah. at least an inventory of Oh, yeah, yeah, you'll be able to, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, we'll, 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 yeah. 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 Y
Yeah, the tape is coming off for sure. That all of that side? There's a longer piece that's on the front. Yeah, this side is clean. I'm not going to bend it back too much. Yeah. <laughs> I think we'll be able to get it in without bending it anymore. The more we bend it, the more brittle that metal is going to get. Yeah. You want the blue oh, board? Debating. to be dry. Okay. And then I am just going to take this close for now. I'm going to do a better yeah. job of that later. Yeah. Um, okay.
for next steps. Limit? What? Let me just, Jill, you want to join? Let me just give a quick overview and then get to the Yeah. Oh, well, good afternoon again, everybody. Uh, I know lots of folks have been watching at home on the live stream. Uh, what you've been seeing today uh, is live from the uh, uh, Conservation Lab at the Virginia Department of Historic Resources. Uh, as you know, uh, the statue, the Confederate statues on Monument Avenue in Richmond have been coming down uh, over the past year. Uh, and earlier this, uh, late this summer, the largest statue, the largest Confederate statue in the country of Robert E. Lee came down. Uh, the process, it was atop a 20-foot uh, tall pedestal, and the process of taking that down began about a month ago. Uh, and yesterday, the team uh, that was disassembling this uh, discovered a time capsule that was placed there uh, in 1887, uh, according to the historical record. Uh, they've been looking for it for a while. Uh, a separate time capsule was found about a week ago uh, in the middle of the pedestal, uh, and that turned out to be a fun thing. It was uh, artifacts placed there by the people that built the uh, physical structure. Uh, and so hats off to them for, for thinking of that. Very cool thing. But then yesterday, uh, the team found the original time capsule, this box right here, uh, that the historical record talked about. And so for the past two hours, uh, the team of conservators from the Virginia, from the Virginia Depar Department of Historic Resources have been uh, disassembling it, taking the materials out. Uh, and you've watched them. Uh, 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 put those aside so that they can be uh, safely uh, maintained and studied over the next uh, uh, several uh, days, a few weeks, uh, many months. Uh, before we wrap up, I want to give everybody the opportunity to talk to the conservation team. Uh, we'll turn first to Kate Ridgway, who has been leading this uh, work today, and she'll tell you first about what's going to happen to the materials next. And then we'll open it up for questions, and then we'll wrap up. Before you your name, kind of Sorry, yes, I'm, yeah, thank you, Andre. I'm Grant Neely, uh, G-R-A-N-T, Neely, N-E-E-L-Y. Uh, I work for Governor Northam as the Chief Communications Officer for the Commonwealth of Virginia. All right, Kate Ridgway. Hi, uh, once again, I'm Kate Ridgway. I'm the State Archaeological Conservator for the Department of Historic Resources. Um, just a quick recap, uh, me and my colleagues who will be um, – talking and answering your questions in a sec. Um, as carefully as we could, remove several objects from this container. We are going to try and get you a full inventory of that as soon as we can. Um, you, Most of you are here, so you know most of the stuff that we've already brought out. Uh, really, the next steps are we're going to try and stabilize these artifacts. They were more waterlogged than we had hoped, but not as bad as it could have been. Um, so what you're seeing right now is basically what's going on with all the metal artifacts in the back. So the coins, the bullets, and everything. We're putting those into containers. They're going in with silica gel. They're being dried out as much as possible. Um, that is not the case with all the organics. So the paper and everything that you saw is going to have a different process. Um, and so I'm going to let um, Sue Donovan from UVA and uh, Gretchen Gades from uh, Colonial Williamsburg Foundation talk about the next processes for paper and for textiles. So uh, I'm Sue Donovan, Conservator for Special Collections at University of Virginia Library, um, here as a, a sister institution for DHR. Um, so what's going to happen in the next couple of hours as we finish the triage is we're going to um, focus on putting the very, very waterlogged books that we will not be able to um, interleave or otherwise dry. We're going to put those in the freezer. And, um, so putting items in the freezer buys us a lot of time, and they will eventually be dried. We're going to um, put silica gel in the freezer after they're completely frozen. It will help draw off the moisture from the books. Um, the, the flat items, such as the newspapers here, we're going to work on um, getting them as flat as possible and then drying them between um, pieces of non-woven, non-spun um, polyester fabric and blotting paper. So um, that helps draw out the moisture from the very thin pieces of paper, like newspaper. Uh, and um, as they dry, we'll, we'll con continually sort of move them through the pack so that we um, can focus on what's what, uh, the, the more wet items and make sure that those get dry as well. 
My name is Gretchen Guidis. I'm from the Conservation Department at Colonial Williamsburg Foundation, and I'm here to help with the textiles. And they are going through a more um, similar process to the paper. We're trying to get what is damp or wet, dry quickly. And this is done with sandwiching things between blotter in a single layer. The other thing that we have a concern about is all of the textiles that we did have have some sort of media associated with them. They're printed, or my favorite, they have a metal uh, decoration, either in the form of metals, uh, like a uh, owner award, or for metal fringes, just to get even better and fancier. So these are the things that, because they live together, we really need to get the moisture gone and to keep things dry, especially in the case of a two-tone silk ribbon that was retrieved. It has dyes that will actually migrate, so we need to get that drying quickly. So that's already been sandwiched between blotter and is in the part of that drying process. So um, just so you know, uh, the artifacts are staying here temporarily. Uh, DHR is just providing a conservation for these artifacts, and then they're going to be stabilized, and then we're going to be working with the final owners of the artifacts to make sure that they are preserved in a way that works for their institution. Are there any questions? Who exactly will the final owners be? That I do not know. Uh, that is yet to be determined at this point. I think it's the Commonwealth's position that they are the property of the Commonwealth, but um, th that's a question that we will spend more time working to answer. And this process buys us time to have that process happen. So the picture of Lincoln uh, in his grave or in his coffin, uh, what, what was that? Uh, from what I can tell, that was a mass printed engraving that appeared in Harper's Weekly. So it was not an original. Um, it was perhaps a, a taken from a photograph, but it is an engraving um, in a newspaper. So the newspaper was from 1865, um, from what we can tell, unless it was a reprint, which has happened. Um, so uh, there's really there there was no photograph per se. Is that what that centerfold? Yes, exactly. Did anything in particular intrigue you or pique your interest? Like, what does this tell us about the people at that time? I what think they we cared about. I, I mean, I, I think that we haven't had a chance to even look at these things. We were treating them as artifacts, and we aren't going to have a chance to process this anytime soon. Right now, we're just trying to stabilize them, and then we'll be able to go back and figure out what we have. Did this thing provide us with a quick, brief summary of the thing that we found? Uh, well, I, I think for as far as we can tell, um, uh, with, without having a, a perfect memory, that, um, the items that were on the list, we, we found quite a few of them. So I, um, you know, as we're documenting, we'll be checking them off and, and comparing them with the, the inventory list we already have. Yep. And once we've done that, we'll be sharing information all of you will have um, a complete inventory, we'll have photographs, and we'll be happy to share those. The, the first item she took out, some of us weren't in the room when you actually got the top off. Are those medals of some kind? So we found some coins and a button and some um, mini balls. Mm -hmm. But they weren't like battle medals. I there. didn't see any of those, but there were a lot of things inside envelopes it looked like. So we're not, we honestly aren't sure what, what all we have yet. Okay. Anybody else? Is there anybody here who can speak to how common it was or wasn't to have a time capsule placed inside? So, um, I am not a historian, and you should really find a historian. I think the folks at the Valentine probably know more about this than I do. I'm positive they do. Um, but I, I think that um, there's a question as to whether or not this is truly a time capsule. Time capsules were meant to have a definite opening date in the future, and this did not appear to have that. So calling it a cornerstone box is probably more accurate. 
And then how long are the coins going to go at the end of that one? We have to get them dry, and then I'm going to assess them as I get a chance. Oh, okay. And, and so I, I'll be able to do more photography and stuff and get okay. more coin information out to y'all. What is the cornerstone box? So, I mean, it's literally a box they put together to put in the cornerstone. I don't have a better... I was talking to my colleague at the Valentine, and that's sort of the, the wording that we could find that was the best wording. It was a box they, of things they put together to put in the cornerstone. And then I don't. it didn't have an end date like a normal time capsule where it's like, in 100 years, we're going to open this. It just wasn't that kind of box. It was something that they put under the statue. From inscriptions that I saw in the envelopes coming out, um, inscriptions said for the cornerstone. So I, I think that really vibes with what Kate's talking about. Is there no inscription on the side of the box, or, or can you just not tell? I have not seen, when I looked at it last night, there was no inscription on the side of the box. I'm not seeing any inscription on the inside anywhere. We can't see it on the lid. I, I mean, it is, it is definitely possible that this copper has been sitting in acidic water for long enough that that has sort of been corroded away. The right, other possibility else? is it never existed. Who knows? Sorry, go ahead. No. Anybody else? Okay, we're going to get back to work. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you guys for being Before patient. Before we go, let's give a big shout out to the Department of Historic Resources. These are the best conservators in the United States uh, of America. And to everybody at home, uh, thank you to them. Thank you to the uh, team from the Virginia Film Office. Thank you to uh, the legal team at the governor's office who made this possible. Nice work, especially uh, on a holiday uh, week. Uh, these are folks who are used to toiling uh, by themselves in this room. And so <laughs> we've had lots of folks fully vaccinated, fully masked uh, together in the room. Uh, so thank you all for being here as and, well. Today. And thank you uh, again to the folks in the back that you're not seeing who are working. What is the time capsule that was put in just recently? Where is that now? I don't know the I, I don't actually. I'll, I'll, I'll find out. I just don't yeah. know everything. I, I don't do new time capsules. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. All right. Thank you all. Any other questions? So um, Sue, S U B, Donovan, D O N. Hey, Sue and Don. Can you guys spell your names for them, please? Sue Donovan, S U E D O N O V A N. I'm conservator for special collections at UVA Library. Gretchen Guidus. It's Guy with two S's. I'm sorry. Something, you know how we get this. Spent hours. Yeah. Cool. There you go. The branching side. Ninety percent of the frame of scary. Ten percent of it isn't. Okay, for whatever reason, I was like, I'm, I swear to God that that box is like, it's, it's giving off some weird smell. Make me feel some kind of way.